Grace be to you in peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for our meditation this morning is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, beginning with verse 29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. So far the word. In Christ Jesus, who has set us free from sin to make us new creation, a new creation. Dear fellow redeemed, of a number of days ago, Coca-Cola announced that they were going to stop producing Coke Zero and roll out a brand new version of it, I believe Coca-Cola Zero Sugar or something like that. They tried this once before, a generation ago, and it didn't go so well, but they're hoping that this time it will work out better. The goal of their rollout and all the marketing that is associated with it is to show the world this new product and hopefully entice them to buy it. We all tend to like to show something new, not necessarily in a proud way or a show-offish way, just simply the excitement and the joy that we have of something new. Hey, look at this new set of clothes I have or this gift that I just received. Come see our newly remodeled home, or maybe a brand new home altogether. My new game, my new device, my new app. All kinds of things are new, and we like to roll it out to show others the newness and the great things that those items can do. Eventually, all of those things that are new become old. When God refers to us as a new creation, it really never grows old. And it is definitely something to show. It's a new you, not because of tremendous weight loss or some new thing that you've brought into your life, but spiritual newness. The newness of having sins forgiven. The newness of having the weight of guilt from off of our shoulders. The newness of knowing who leads us and who holds the future in his hand and who promises to bless that future for us and all believers. In 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul said, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All the old passed away in in the washing blood of the lamb, washing the old away, taking away the sin and its guilt, and giving us this new self that loves to follow what God says in his word, that rejoices to glorify his name. And with this newness that we have through the Spirit's working, as we make our way through life, it is what encourages us when the old and familiar sinful world around us is tired, grows tired and makes us weary and at times harms us. Paul also says in 2 Corinthians, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man, this earthly self, is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. This new self doesn't grow old because through the gospel and the working of the Spirit, we're renewed. Day by day, the Lord's mercies are new. Day by day, our sins are washed away and forgiven. Day by day, we are given the abilities and the needs are fulfilled to complete the tasks that the Lord lays before us. The words of our text this morning come from a larger context in Ephesians where Paul speaks of the same thing, the new self members with one another and members in the body of Christ. So this morning, we consider show the world the new you, out with the old and in with the new and motivated by the Lord. As we think about showing the world the new you, we take note that that world begins with those that we know and associate with the closest. Yes, we are called upon to witness to the world, every creature under heaven, but that starts with friends, family, those we hold most dear and most close, and at times can be the ones with whom we find the greatest difficulty to show our new self and to share the glory of our Savior. 
As Paul addresses the kinds of things that go out with the old, as we are created anew in Christ, he begins in our text with the words, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up. Paul starts with our mouths. Not surprising, because at times our mouths can get us in such a world of trouble that we don't even know what happened before we're in that trouble. The Apostle James speaks in much the same way when he writes in chapter 3, We all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. For out of the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not be so. The tongue is an unruly evil. The way that Paul describes it in our text is as rotten and decaying filth. If you've ever opened up a container that's been in the refrigerator far too long and opened it up to see what was in there and oh, quickly closed it because of the smell, now you know the kind of words that Paul is speaking of. Rotten, stinking words that do nothing to build up or help. Certainly this includes all things that take the name of the Lord in vain, that misuse his name, do not glorify him, uh, in such as cursing and in proper swearing. But it goes beyond that as well. Words are rotten if they don't have to be technically taking God's name in vain in the sense of misusing the actual names. They don't have to be curses and sinful swearing. If in any way our speech, whether it be the content of the speech, the words that we use, the tone that we use, if any part of what comes out of our mouth does not glorify God, does not give credit to him in some fashion simply by expressing his will. Or in other words, if someone heard what I said and wouldn't have a good picture of what it means to be a child of God, those words are like that rotten container of food in the refrigerator. And that's part of the old that is gone in our new self. Of course, we still struggle with our old self, so it's still there. But those rotten words from our mouths become part of what we can account for and sins for which we rightly repent. The power of the mouth and of the tongue is great indeed. Undoubtedly, every one of us here has been on both the delivering end and the receiving end. As you roll out the new self to the world, remember, let no rotten word come out of your mouth. The Apostle Paul continues, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. It's a very fascinating illustration that the Apostle uses. Don't make the Holy Spirit sad. It's one of the examples in which God uses a human emotion or a human characteristic to help us have insight into God's view and dealings with us. Don't make the Holy Spirit sad. And then Paul brings in what the Holy Spirit has done for us, who has sealed you for the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit is that person of God who has called us to faith. Through the power of God's word and the gospel, the Holy Spirit is the one that has called us, worked in our hearts, the sorrow for our sins and the trust in Christ for forgiveness. He has created that faith. And the Apostle Paul tells us in writing to the Corinthians that the Holy Spirit dwells within us. 
so intimately connected as the Spirit in our hearts and in our lives as children of God with this new self that he's right there. Now think about the kinds of things that would dishearten you and sadden you in the words and life and activity of a very close roommate, family member, someone that you're very intimately connected to. If that individual were to pay no regard to what you said, that would sadden you. When sinners pay no regard to the word of God or dismiss it and warp it to be whatever they want it to be, that saddens the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit dwells within us when we, even as children of God with the new man, but also with the old, don't listen to what God says and in our sinful flesh, make it fit what we want it to be. The Holy Spirit is sad. The Holy Spirit who dwells within us is grieved. If we were to speak against God and his word, the same would be true. If we take our bodies and lives into sinful behavior, again, you are taking the Holy Spirit with you wherever you go. He dwells within you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So wherever you are, whatever you do, whatever situation you place yourself into, he's there too. And again, all of us would quickly recognize that there have been places and times where the Holy Spirit dwelling within us has certainly been saddened. As we go out with the old to reveal our new self and show our new self to the world, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. He has sealed you for redemption. He has made you Christ's own. He has brought you the forgiveness of sins. What joy is yours through his work? Don't make him sad. And the Apostle Paul also then goes on, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Bitterness can be one of the worst things that can afflict a sinner. It's easy for it to sneak in, even for a child of God with this new self, because our human nature, by nature, wants revenge. God says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Have you been wronged? Turn the other cheek. I will take care of it. Anger, wrath, another very easily, another emotion, another sin easily fallen into. Clamor, slander, and then malice, just a simple disregard for others. We would put forth that as children of God, we don't pursue these fully or regularly, but our old sinful self still wants to and at times is able to. As we seek to put out our new self and show the world our new you, these are all things that are out with the old. As we consider our lives and these things that Paul mentions, we can understand the rottenness, the filthiness that we carry with us in our sinful flesh. As Jesus told the disciples, it's not what you put into your body that defiles, like the Pharisees put put forth, but rather what comes out. And out of the mouth, out of the heart rather, proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemy, every other manner of sin. The old shows our need for repentance and taking all of those sins to the cross. The Apostle Paul also then presents the new that comes in as the Spirit creates this new man within us. Yes, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as is fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Out with the old, the corrupt, the rotten words of our mouth, in with the new. What an opportunity to use our mouths, our voices, to proclaim the praises of God, to proclaim the wonderful things that he has done, to give glory to his name, but also to serve one another. Words that are good for building up. And that doesn't mean lying to make everybody feel good. Another place in Ephesians, Paul says, speak the truth in connection with love. Genuine building up does not include falsehood. Genuine building up does not disregard what is sinful and wrong. Genuine building up might mean taking down the rotten, broken foundation first to put a new foundation on. Otherwise... If you just build new on top of the old and decrepit, it all comes crashing down just the same. Speaking the truth in love, build up with our mouths, 
And as the proverb says in Proverbs 25, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. The right word is the apple of gold spoken at the right time as it's set in silver like a precious jewel. The right word at the right time is using our mouths to glorify God and is something for which we can all pray that the Spirit so enables us to speak in that way. Paul goes on, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. Tender-hearted, having sympathy and empathy for others, looking out for one another, as Paul says to the Philippians, not looking out for your own interests, but those of others. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another, knowing that our debt with God is so much greater than anything that we have, we have, someone else has toward us. All of this, in with the new, is motivated by the Lord. Out with the old, in with the new, only God can accomplish it. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. He is the one who sealed us for redemption. And Paul says at the end of our text, as God in Christ forgave you. There is the motivation. There is the reason for out with the old, in with the new. God has forgiven you in connection with Christ Jesus. In this text, we have the whole triune God, the Lord, Jehovah, actively working in our hearts and our lives to go out with the old, bring in the new, and to enable us to show the world the new us. God the Father forgives us on the, on the, because of what Jesus the Son has done, on the basis of what Jesus did in dying for our sins, removing the guilt. The Spirit brings us into that grace, keeps us there, dwells within us, and that is the new you that you have the joy and the privilege and the opportunity to show. Showing the new you is what's active and at work in the process of going to someone who has sinned against us privately, seeking to correct them, as Jesus said in our gospel reading, and following the procedure forward as necessary. Showing the new you applies to our relationships, not pursuing the bitterness and the anger and the things that are out, but rather embracing the forgiving one another and speaking words that will build up and so bring grace to the hearers. It is as Paul says to the Philippians, we are lights shining in a dark and crooked world. And the strength to continue renewing that new you, to confidently show that new you to the world when it mocks and scorns, the power and the strength is likewise from God. The communicants this morning will receive a booster shot in that regard. With Christ's body and blood, the assurance that yes, he died for you. Yes, he takes your sins away and the strengthening that with sins forgiven, you can go forward showing the new you. Not to your pride, not to your glory, but for the glory of God. Go out to the world, show the new you, and so glorify the name of your Lord. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.